I have 10 pieces of advice for young brown scholars. Number one, change the world. Be visionary, be contrary, be revolutionary, dream big. They say, never forget who you are or where you come from. I say, never forget where you are and who you come from. Be the change they want to see in the world. Number two, haters gone hate, let them. Ain't nobody got time for that. Number three, TBH, you might not give a flying rat's ass about that assessment, project, or task, but it is good practice to always bring your best, bring your A game, because when you attest to less than your best, that's when you fail, and you don't fail school, you fail you. Four, deadlines are the fine lines defined between having sight and being blind. Don't fall behind. They are the line between A's and B's, between C's and D's, between the top of the class and just being half assed Hit them. Hit them hard. Hit them like the bully in the yard, like a target, like a bullseye. Just hit them. Five, fight Fight with your pen, not your fist, with this and with this, with your mind and your soul. Fight till you reach your goal. Your classmates might stand with two feet on the floor. You, you stand for more. You stand on the shoulders of giants of factory workers and laborers, of dawn-raided overstayers, of mamas and papas who dream their dreams for you of the overworked, underpaid underclass of Aotearoa. Never be ashamed. Reclaim that name and be their fame. Let your victories live on their lips. Your triumphs sing in their hearts. Six, speak. You have been given a voice, a choice to be your own tusitala, your own teller of tales. Decolonize, don't compromise, and never let anyone tell your story for you. Seven, get your ass to class to pass. (laughs) Eight, always represent. Rep your name, your nash, your kainga, your ainga, your whānau, your whānau. Know that you stand for more than yourself. You are more. Be more. Be the you that you are and the skin that you're in and never let anyone tell you you're doing it wrong. You sing your song. Ten, earn your culture. Know when to step in, step out, step back, step up. Know when to stay dumb, keep mum. Know when to speak up, speak out, speak loud. Be true, be true to who you are. Ko te mutua tahi ki te atua, ko te mutua rua ki te kingi Māori atu hetia, ko te mutua toru ki a tātou. Kia ora nā, whakalofa lahi atu, tā loha ni, mā loe lele, tā loha lava, bula vinaka, and aloha kākou. <laughs> and the warmest of Pacifica greetings. I am Afakasi Tongan Palangi, first generation New Zealand born. I am a theatre maker and an academic. I am South Auckland Desile one, born and raised. I am a high school dropout. I am a doctoral scholar. I am a student. I am a teacher. I am an associate director for Ako Matatupu Teach First NZ, a not-for-profit organization targeting educational inequality. I am the creative director of the Blackfriars Theatre Company, whose work forms the content of the slides that you can see. Much of the time, I get to live out this proverb, the Hawaiian proverb, aohe paukaike i ka halao hookahi, which means that all knowledge is not taught in the same school. My work occurs in the spaces where education, equity, and the performing arts meet for young brown scholars. With those scholars in mind, there are many ways to tell the stories of the changing face of Monaco, many ways to story the South Side. First, some statistics. One in 16 New Zealanders identifies as Pasifika. In South Auckland, that ratio narrows to about one in four. The average age of that one in four is about 13 years. South Auckland is young and brown. Not so long ago, I was sitting in a school hall in South Auckland at a Pasifika Arts evening. In her speech, the deputy principal commented on how nice it was that the arts give Pacifica students the opportunity to express their natural talents. She meant well, of course, but then again, so did the missionaries. (laughs) 
How would it be if right now I got you all to stand up and perform a siva? Perhaps you would master it. Perhaps you would very awkwardly try your best. Perhaps that hole that you're hoping for in the ground would open up in front of you and you would disappear. Perhaps it would be in the too hard basket. Perhaps you would succeed. Perhaps you would fail. Perhaps, and just perhaps, this is how our young brown scholars feel in every class, every day. We cannot continue to fail one quarter of our school population at school. Einstein said, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will go its whole life believing that it is stupid. And yet this is something that we do to our students every day. When a Pacifica student can't read at a predetermined level, then they are labelled remedial, priority learner, at risk. We would never say this about a Pākehā kid who can't dance. And yet when a Pacifica student dances expertly, we call it natural. This is simultaneously admiring but also dismissing the skills that they've just displayed. Saying that these things are natural belittles the deep and intrinsic cultural literacies from which these practices come and the skills and effort required to execute them. No one is born knowing how to sever. These are the practices by which we carry our genealogy, by which we carry our history and our heritage. If what Einstein says is true, then we are served by an education system that is failing a significant portion of our population, one in four. One in four students whose cultural capital does not match that of the classroom. We cannot continue to fail this one in four. We cannot continue to fail a quarter of the population of South Auckland. We cannot continue to send one in four students to school in order to learn that being dumb is the same as being brown, that being poor is the same as being brown, that failing is the same as being brown. I began with 10 pieces of advice for young brown scholars. Here are 10 pieces of advice for the teachers of young Browns. Number one, raise the bar. Respect them enough to expect their best and when they bring to you less, say, this is not good enough, not you are not good enough. They've been told that enough and they're tough and it's rough, but the stuff that they're made of is enough. Two, Believe unfailingly in their limitless potential. They will look into your eyes and know if you are lying. Three, feed them, literally feed them. Feed their mouths, feed their minds, feed their hunger for justice, break bread with them, and know that when we take communion, a promise is made that blood shed and blood shared means sacrifice. Four, Laugh. Laugh at yourself, but not at your jokes. Your jokes are dry. But you are funny, and in laughter there's power, and in humour there's humility, and this ranks higher than their academic standing or rank score. It is more. Five. No one ever changed the world by yelling at it. Fear might change their behaviour, but respect will change their mind. Six, know that you are in the presence of warriors. They have fought. They are fighting. There are battle lines behind their eyes, and you cannot possibly understand the arms they bear, the scars they wear. Don't make the classroom another trick behind enemy lines. Sometimes they need a soft place to land, a safe place to stand, someone willing to understand. And if this is not the lesson you'd planned, then perhaps it is the lesson you need. Seven, be the grown-up and own up when you're wrong. Be strong enough to fail sometimes, to ask for help sometimes. Be the risk-taker, the mistake-maker. Give them permission to do the same. Be fallible, be malleable. Take the shape of the tool that's needed because our core means that if they're not learning, you're not teaching. And if nothing ever changes, then nothing ever changes. Eight, 
when they rage at you. And sometimes they will, because sometimes they're fill up and fed up with their lives, and they throw words like knives at your feet. Don't throw them back. Pick those knives up and see them for what they are, not weapons meant to hurt you, but to relieve them. They could not carry them anymore. And you... Pick those knives off the floor, throw them out of the door, and begin again. Nine, you will hear stories of failure that's prevalent in the pigment of their skin or inherent in their postcode. It's your duty to tell a new story. Don't let that shit happen on your shift. Ten, stand with them and by them, and for them, speak with them, and for them, see them, and know them for who they are, hold them, and your arms, and your thoughts, and your prayers, don't let go, fight, fight for them, and keep fighting, they are worth it, and if you back them when they're 15, they will have your back for life. The Blackfriars are currently working in eight Decile One secondary schools to grow Pacifica leaders for South Auckland. It's a project called Southside Rise. If indeed literacy can be defined as the way in which we communicate, preserve and remember who we are and how we live in and with the world, then this is what literacy looks like to us.
changing face of Monaco will be made up of young brown scholars. Let us serve them well. Kia ora.